Welcome to the NBA. As explained by Succession Quotes, shout out to Bill Simmons. He did a series of columns over the course of the last 15 years where he looked at the NBA through Rounders quotes, through Fast and Furious quotes, through Game of Thrones quotes. We're doing Succession. Why? Because it's about power and pettiness. And that's what the NBA is about. So let's get right into it. It's the NBA as explained by Succession. It's okay. It's a job. Yeah. Shooting bolts into cows' heads is a job, but I, I, it's not how I want to spend my Thanksgiving. This one goes out to the Timberwolves president and coach Tom Thibodeau. Tibbs was supposed to start Chicago 2 back to the Great Lakes up in Minnesota. He started bringing the band back together with Derrick Rose and Todd Gibson and Jimmy Butler, and there were rumors about Joe Kim Noah coming up there. It turned out that Jimmy didn't want to be part of the reunion. So now Tom Thibodeau's got an unhappy all-star on his hands, but he's going to hold fast. He's not going to trade him. And then Glenn Taylor goes to the Board of Governors meetings and is like, we're open for business. I don't know if that's how Glenn Taylor sounds, but let's go with it. Tom Thibodeau is now in a situation where he runs a team in which he has no power and he's about to trade away probably his best player, depending on how you look at Carl Towns' Twitch habits. But this is the problem for Tom Thibodeau. He thought he was going to get total control of a team with these bright young talents. And now it turns out he's basically filling out TPS reports screaming, Ice! Ice! <laughs> okay, the entertainment has arrived. It's like a, like the first stages of an orgy. It's like kind of exciting, but also super awkward. Lakers, baby, Lakers. <laughs> Every succession quote could be a Lakers one, but this is what we're gonna go with. What is this? We're really going with the meme team and the kids? Are you guys gonna play fast? Is it defense first? Can you shoot at all? Brandon Ingram, are you ready? Rajon Rondo, the, the rabbi for Lonzo Ball? Is this really happening? This is gonna be a year of transition for the Lakers. I think that they'll probably make the playoffs. I think borderline, some people think they're gonna be as high as the three seed. Whatever happens, it's not gonna be boring, much like an orgy. Not that I would know. Yeah, it's pretty wild. It's cool though, because it's like I didn't cheat, just all the sperm stayed in my own body like a closed loop system, so. What's up, Blazers fans? I know this is gonna be tough to hear, but the Blazers went into last season's playoffs hot as any team in the NBA. And what happens, they get nuked by Anthony Davis, swept out in the first round. And how do they respond to this embarrassment? By doing nothing, by keeping it all in house. Who do they add here? Anthony Simmons, who doesn't believe water is wet, and Nick Stauskas. Otherwise, they're running back the same team they ran into the playoffs last year, minus Ed Davis. Look, I respect what Portland's doing. They Developed Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum into one of the best backcourts in the NBA. But at a certain point, you're swallowing your own eight seed here. <laughs> Woo! Damn. Isla, I have five farms, and underneath all my farms runs a big giant aquifer that's Ew. like an underground lake. That's and so I have, cool. I have pumping rights. That means I get to take the water. That's right? so it's cool. very important because someday water is going to be more precious than gold and people are gonna kill each other to try to get that water. Oh, hey, hey, Con, don't, don't, to don't, the don't, truth. don't, 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 don't listen. Right, right, sorry, but I'm gonna have the water. Welcome back, Brooklyn Nets. It's been a while since you traded for Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce and sacrificed your entire franchise for those two washed dudes from the Celtics. But here you are. You're back at the table, finally. You've got an exciting young team. The only person you're paying more than $10 million is Alan Crabb. And next year, you're gonna have $65 million to play with. And beyond that, people really like Brooklyn. Have you seen girls? They have a fun team, a good coach, a solid GM, and Brooklyn's a fun place to live. Cap space is the new water. Can I, can I TM that? Can we trademark that? Yeah, yes. Cap space is the new water. It's the most precious commodity in the NBA because you want to be able to pounce when one of these superstars is like, I'm not feeling it here. That's where Brooklyn is. Um, but I actually got paid and uh, I was thinking about maybe going to, um, uh, have you ever visited the uh, California Pizza Kitchen? <laughs> no, dear Lord, no. It's pretty delicious, Tom. No, no, it isn't, Greg. I mean, you might think it tastes delicious, but... They make a Cajun chicken linguine just how I like but it. But that's not how you're supposed to like it. Okay. You probably have quite uh, an undereducated palate, so let's go out and I'll teach you and I'll show you how to be rich. This goes out to Coach Bud and the Milwaukee Bucks. You see my hairline? This is because I was watching Bucks offensive sets from last season. Coach Bud got Jeff Teague to an all-star game. Four Hawks starters made an all-star team once. That's insane. He gets to coach Giannis. Jason Kidd is the Cajun Linguini. Coach Bud is handmade pasta that's been dipped in a tomato sauce made by 85-year-old Italian women who only make one vat of tomato sauce 
a year, and you have to pay a million dollars just to taste it with your pinky finger. Giannis is about to go to an elegant, fast-paced, floor-spaced offense. We haven't seen him in that before. We are about to see this dude go from old Terminator to T-1000. Get ready. Mangia! <laughs> <laughs> Greg the motherfucking egg. Look at you. Uh, some guys smoke weed around the back, I think. Might know. You little Machiavellian fuck. I see you, Greg. I like it. This has to go to somebody or some team that has been screwing up for a while, but is slowly starting to put it all together. Heist of the Century Part 2, basically Tatum Fultz the sequel, getting Luka Doncic instead of Trey Young. Woo! They got DeAndre Jordan, only took a couple of kidnappings for that to happen. They've got Dirk getting his like actual victory tour where he's gonna get to win some games, which is nice for him. This is a team for a while, they would save all this cap room and then it would be like, should we get Dwight Howard or the guy coming off Achilles tendon surgery? Now they've actually got a real team, they may have a transformational player, and they still got Dennis Smith Jr. getting better and better in the backcourt. There's a lot to like in Dallas. Do you hear playoffs? I'm hearing playoffs? Greg the motherfucking egg? Greg egg. <sighs> How long do you give it? Uh, I'm sorry? The marriage. How long do you give it? Oh, is there doubt afoot? This pains me to do, but I gotta give this to the Sixers, wow. and here's why. Yeah, I know. So the Sixers were the feel-good story of last season. They went from the bottom to the top. They beat the Miami Heat in the first round of the playoffs. It looked like they were gonna be set up for the next 10 years with these franchise players. But here's the problem. They didn't add anybody of significance. They took a flyer on Zaire Smith in the draft instead of drafting the sure thing, Mikhail Bridges, and Zaire Smith promptly broke his foot and is out for the season. They're basically looking at a situation where a lot of other teams in the Eastern Conference are getting better. Kawhi is on the Toronto Raptors. Boston looks like they're going to win 70 friggin' games this year. And you still got the Indiana Pacers who were pretty punchy last season. So the Sixers are in a competitive conference and they actually don't have some of the things they need like shooting. So Schiff is going to Washington. So why don't tonight, why don't I take you out? No. What, for real? I thought you were, I thought you were going to say take you out and beat the shit out of you or take you out and put a bullet through your dumb fucking brain or something else, you know, funny Ooh, like that. Greg, I'm not some beast. Congratulations, Phoenix. You are no longer a crime against basketball. Now, if I'm home on a Wednesday and it's late and my wife is out of town and my Apple TV is broken, I think I'll watch the Suns. No, seriously though, there's a little bit of excitement going on in Phoenix. Devin Booker will eventually come back from his unicycle injury. We got DeAndre Ayton, Mikhail Bridges, who should have been a sixer. And you could see Josh Jackson taking a leap into being kind of a JV Kawhi going two ways there. So that's pretty, that's must see TV in, in terms of relative to what Phoenix used to be. Are we good? Can I count on your vote for Team Future? I can promise you that I am spiritually and emotionally and ethically and morally behind whoever wins. Welcome to the age of superstar player movements. This one goes out to Kevin Durant. KD proved everybody wrong when we were like, he shouldn't leave the thunder, this is bad. Like he's maximized his talent. He's won two NBA Finals, two NBA Finals MVPs, but free agency looms. And when Kyrie Irving's out going to Boston Celtics ticket holder meetings and saying, I'm gonna sign with the Celtics long term, and different people are committing their futures to different teams, KD is being super millennial about it. KD is saying, hey, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be transparent. If I'm thinking about free agency today, I'm gonna tell you about it. What that means is that there is a possibility you could leave the Warriors. And the thing is, is that there's not a better team to go to. He is on the best team probably of all time. So you have to think that Kevin Durant's gonna do whatever works for Kevin Durant. And that probably means he's going to the Knicks. Uh, where did he go? Buckle up, fucklehead. <laughs> Yo, seriously, the Hawks could win like six games. <laughs> <laughs>